Uh, yes, today we have our SD Fun Shop, and to teach it, we have none other than Mr. Andrew Leach. So go ahead, Andrew. Hey there, everybody. Welcome, and thank you for having me. Uh, I'm really looking forward to teaching this little fun shop. Hopefully, you can come away from it knowing more about your SD instrument than when you came in. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Andrew, and I'm in our location in Osprey, Florida, where it is 110 nearly, and I... Uh, uh, special thank you to those of you who are in Arizona where it's still the morning. So here I am at the SD Discovery 2. Those of you who may have an easy series instrument, this works really comparably. I'll do my best as we go along to uh, places where there is a slight difference in translation between the two series as I'll tell them to you. So first and foremost, on the SD Discovery, the uh, most important button I think for anyone to know about is the easy button. As we go through this, hopefully all of you already know what the easy button does. But uh, we'll be doing a lot of review as we go through. The easy button right here is what's going to put a split in my keyboard and And that split is right here between B and C. And that turns one keyboard into two keyboards. A keyboard for my right hand, which has my melody. And a keyboard for my left hand, which is going to play the chords. So as you probably all know, that is the crux of everything that we do when we play recreational music. Now, the easy button is going to make a sound come out, and the first one that you heard right here is the sound of the organ. But in my section called left, I can change that sound. On the discovery, I have options like piano, strings, and the organ and strings. Now, most of the time, when you play with the easy button, you'll probably be doing it for practice reasons, right? There are some songs where you might prefer to just play the whole song with the easy button, but for the most part, it's going to be when you're trying to get your hands together on a more difficult song. <clears throat> and something worth knowing when you're doing that is that the most common question I've gotten a note to make sure my original sound button is on. That should clean this up. It just sounds a little quieter than before is all. <laughs> All right, hopefully that clears everything up. So um, the number one question when folks are using their easy button is how do I get rid of that hum? They'll play their song and then the hum remains. The answer is to turn back off the easy button. But if you did not know, you can also use a no chord, an NC, to turn off that hum as well. To activate a no chord, all you have to do is in your chord section here, play any three keys simultaneously that are right next to each other. For example, here's my C. I could play a C, C sharp, and D. And that silences the hum. Any three consecutively. But don't do that when you're using a style because what it does is it removes everything but the drums. Don't fall into the trap of always using a no chord to stop your song and then letting the drums play on. Most of the time you'll be using a music style. That's where your band that uh, plays a professional accompaniment to back you up, they'll follow your chords. Your left hand is gonna be the conductor. Your right hand will play the melody. And something to note is that anytime you turn on one of these styles, here I'll touch rock, 
If you can see on my screen here, and if you're following along at home, the easy button came along for the ride. So there's never a need to turn on a style like rock and then turn on the easy button. All you'll have done is turned your easy button off and then it won't play right. Alternatively, there's, there is no need to turn on your easy button and then rock. Lowry pioneered the idea of the push and play style of instrument. If you want to play country music, you push country and then you play and you're all set. Um, and these SD instruments, which we call Lowry inspired, work exactly the same way. We figure the fewer buttons you have to press, the better. Now, your backgrounds, your styles, your rhythms, we'll use all three of those words to mean the same thing. They're right over here on the left. You can see where I'm pointing. On the discovery, you've got eight of them. Standards, which if you don't know what that means, think big band or swing. Country, mellow, rock, march slash polka, Latin, ballad, and three quarters. If you don't know, three quarters means waltz. Some instruments say three quarters, some instruments say waltz. It means the same thing. This one says three quarters. And in your music, hopefully you've seen the fraction in the beginning, a 4-4 four, four, or a 3-4. If the music is 3-4, you'll want to use this 3-4. If the music says 4-4, four, four, you'll want to not use that 3-4. Now, um, in our styles, we've got a mellow and a ballad. If you have an EZ series instrument from Lowry, you have a button called smooth. And when I talk about mellow on the SD, mellow is smooth. They changed the name smooth to mellow. There's also a ballad. And a common question is, what is the difference between mellow and ballad? They're both slow. They're both pretty. Um, some of you may have heard of something called 6-8 or triplets. That's ballad. If you have a song that calls for 6-8 or triplets, you would use ballad. Otherwise, maybe mellow, and if you have no idea what any of that means, ask your PA. Now, the auto setup button that's right here is what's going to make sure that any style I set up, that I choose, is going to be automatically set up for the best sound. It's going to balance. For example, I'm going to turn on standards. This is my swing time background. Next, this one's country. This one's called Roadhouse. Here. I like the introduction. Listen to this. One, two. And then here... For one final example, here is the March slash polka. It works wonderfully for either one. So hopefully you noticed that all three of those styles sounded different from each other. They each came with a different right hand sound. That was a trombone and clarinet with my march. Standards came with just the clarinet. Country came with a country guitar. That's because of my auto setup feature right here. Its job being to make sure that there's always a good setup sound. And it does more than just that too. It'll change the left, which I mentioned earlier is the easy button sound. And it changes the volumes a little bit to balance it out to, for the style of music that you've picked. You can always change that if you like. They made sure that these are open to your experimentation. Over on the right, you'll see all your list of sounds divided into two categories, orchestral and organs. The orchestral sounds include piano, electric piano, jazz guitar, electric guitar, strings, trumpet, trombone, clarinet, sax, and vibes. 
These are all sampled sounds. They sound fantastic. Unlike the old school oscillators, if you put on the saxophone on this and play a C note, you're playing a recording of a saxophone player playing a C note. Over in the organ section, I have sweet, jazz, and pipe. Now, something worth noting about these sounds. When you change, say I have on piano. I'm going to touch piano. Now I want to change from piano to strings. I touch strings and piano goes away. Now I want to change to an organ. I'll turn on my sweet organ and strings, hopefully you can see from the camera over there, strings did not go away. So when you switch from one instrument in orchestral to another, the previous one goes away and you replace it. When you switch from one instrument to another in organ, the previous one goes away. But when you add an organ and an orchestral, they don't go away. They stack on top of each other. So if you want only an organ, don't forget to turn off your orchestral. If you want only orchestral, don't forget to turn off organ. One final neat fact about the orchestral sounds over here, not everybody knows that you can combine them. For example, here is a piano. Here is an electric piano. Now I'm going to combine them, and there's my two sounds at once. The way I did that was I held down one sound while I pressed another one. In this case, I held down piano and then pressed electric piano. When you do that, the second one will light up green, not red. The one that's green is going to be just a little bit quieter, so you can change the balance the way you like it piano louder than electric piano electric piano louder than regular piano not a huge difference but you can adjust a little bit you can also use the volume control just to the left in the orchestral section to adjust the volume of your orchestral instrument and some instruments sound really good together uh, others don't necessarily, so use your ear and use your judgment. But just to get you started, some nice combinations would be piano and strings. That's the default for mellow. It's a really nice sound. Um, vibes combines very well with lots of sounds, be it the piano, the electric piano, jazz guitar, or strings. Here's vibes and strings together. Compare that to just strings. Or just vibes. It's a nice full sound. So experiment with that if you haven't been already. Now those are what I consider the really crucial parts of learning to play an SD Discovery. If I forgot to mention it, my power button is over here on my far left. <laughs> so once you have it turned on, all you have to understand how the easy button works, how the music styles work, and you're off and running. The next thing, you can go and change your sounds if you like. One thing that does bear mentioning, though, we try to make these push and play. The fewer button presses the poss uh, possible, the better. But you're always going to want to play with your tempo button over here immediately to the left of the screen. As far as I'm concerned, this is one of the most important buttons on the instrument and one of the most underutilized. Everyone always says, yeah, I want to play swing, and they turn on their standards, and they go, and they find that it's difficult. You have to take the tempo and lower it. And when you're changing your tempo, something that is really important to know is that a little bit does not go a long way. What I mean by that is here is a tempo of 100. Here is a tempo of 101. And if you hear the difference, you have a better ear than I do. Here's 102. Still no difference, really. Let's go up to 110. Now there's a little bit of a difference. How about 120? There's a little bit of a difference. So hopefully what you're seeing here is that if you want to go slower you need to not drop the tempo by one or two that won't do anything instead you need to go down by 10 or 20 or 30 whatever it takes to get to a slow enough tempo that you can play along with it then 
when it's time to start speeding back up. Say you had to slow down to a tempo of 70 to be able to play it well. That's fine. Make sure you can play it at 70 and then raise the tempo up by no more than 5 because 75 doesn't really sound any different from 70. If you can play it at 70, you can play it at 75. And then play it a few times at 75 to make sure. And then if you can play it at 75, you can play it at 80. You see where I'm going with this? Little bit of increments up and you won't even notice the difference. And say your goal tempo is 100, or you just keep going up by small increments. Next thing you know, you'll be playing it at 120. And then when you go back down to where you wanted to be all along, it'll be a piece of cake. So please don't neglect the tempo button. Now, there's a lot of other buttons on this instrument as well. I'm going to try and briefly knock out most of them. Some of them you won't use a whole lot. Some of them you will use. But starting from the left, I have a button called Home. I've seen a lot of students who, every time they finish playing a song, they reach over and they press the Home button, and it starts the instrument from the beginning again. But there's no need to do that. All Home does is it turns the instrument off, and then back on again. If you want to stop your song, I would suggest the start stop button over here. It's red, I'm pointing at it, it's currently lit. Now it says start stop, but other than one specific circumstance, which I'll tell you in just a minute, so keep that in your head, I want you to think of it as a stop button. Get rid of that word start completely, it's a stop button. You're gonna start by playing then you're going to stop with the button. The other red button back over to the left here is my master volume. That is the volume for the entire instrument, left hand, right hand, everything. That's the volume for all of it. And if your instrument's too loud, that's what you should turn down. Too frequently, I see people say, oh, my instrument's loud. Let me turn it down. And they reach over here. to this thing that says volume, but if you look up above it, it's drums volume. So you're not actually making anything quieter, you're just kicking your drummer off the stage. So if you wanna make it quieter, red, master, all the way to the left. I'm gonna pass over a comp for just a moment to get back into this section here with my start stop button and my easy button. There's two more buttons in there that if you're not using yet, you should really be playing with these because these are how you're going to sound more professional more quickly. One of them is the intro ending button. It does double duty. If I turn it on right now, it lit up red, but nothing else happened because my band is not playing. When I play my first chord and have my band start playing, it's going to start up a professionally arranged introduction that's going to set the mood, tone, and tempo for my song. And if I watch in my screen, it'll give me a count off. It'll say one, two, ready, play to let me know when it's my turn. Like this. One, two, ready, play. same button it does double duty when my band is playing if I press the button again I get my ending and it says in the screen ending playing keep an eye in the screen when you're doing that not only is it useful because it's going to give you the count off but it's helpful to know whether you're listening to an intro or an ending remember if your band is silent pressing the button will cue an intro but if your band is playing, pressing that button will tell them to end. And I can't tell you how many times I've had this happen. They say, okay, let me get my song set up. All right, I'm on standards. That's what I like. And I adjusted my tempo. That's what I like. And I chose my sound the way I like it. Let's listen to double check. Okay, there it is. Now I'm going to press intro for my intro. And they didn't look on the screen and see that it says ending. So when they start to play... And they say, oh no, where'd my background go? And they call me up and they say, Andrew, I think my keyboard's broken. So just remember, if your band is playing, 
Intro ending gives you an ending. If your band is not playing, intro ending cues an introduction. If that's confusing, ask your PA. I'm going to try and cover a lot of ground, but always check your screen. It's got the best information for you. If you, something sounds weird and wrong, look at your screen. If you played a wrong chord, it'll tell you. If you're not sure if you've got an intro or an ending, look at your screen. It'll tell you. Your screen is your take-home teacher. It's your best friend. Don't forget to look at it. Now, also in this same section, I have the fill button. That makes your backing band do a professional sort of fill in they they do backing band stuff while your lead instrument takes a short break and you could do an entire class on the fill button and how it works and when to use it but i'll just say this for now try it out with every single background because it's unique to every style and try holding it down because it'll do extra stuff if you hold it down longer uh, I mentioned earlier that here is the drum volume. I'm going one more to the right. That is just the volume for my drummer and nothing else. And then next to that is my tempo. That is how fast we're going. That's in beats per minute, but you don't need to know anything about that. Just think of it like miles per hour and try and keep it below 90 when you're just starting out. Something fun about tempo, though. If you press both tempo buttons at the same time, you will see on your screen that it says tempo lock. And that means that whatever you just set your tempo to, it's not going to change until you either turn the instrument off or change it yourself. Anything I do over here is not changing the tempo at all. And so there might be times when you don't want the tempo to change when you change backgrounds. And that's a good way to, uh, to keep that from happening is with the tempo lock. Now, speaking of pressing two buttons at once, I'm going to bring us back over to the left of the instrument once more to the accompaniment volume that I didn't explain before. Here's what accompaniment is. It's the volume of your band, but not your melody. It's the volume of your left hand, but not your right. If I were to turn down the accompaniment all the way, what do you hear left? Not much. I've got my melody, and I've got my drums, because drums, again, are a separate volume over here, drum volume. But that was all of my left hand inside a comp. And accompaniment breaks down into three sub things. Uh, one of them is bass, which is the volume of your bass player. One of them is style, which is the volume of everyone in your background that's not the bass player or the drummer. And lastly, left. Left is the volume of this left right here, that hum that comes from the easy button anytime you're playing and that tags along in the backgrounds as well. So if I were to press both of the account buttons at the same time, it brings up a bass volume which I can adjust independently if I press it again there's left and if I press it again there's style and that's everybody else so here's let's use let's go back to standards again let's remove everybody I'm gonna start by taking away left now I'm gonna take away the style all you hear now is bass and drums I just removed my bass player. Now I'm removing my drummer. You hear silence, but I still see my little metronome over here ticking away the measures. It's still keeping count. It's still going. And here is my right hand still there. So again, pressing a comp both at the same time. Here's my left. That's that hum. Here's my bass. And then here's style. That's everybody else. Lastly, here's my drummer. So those are the parts of your background, and they gave you the option, if you want, to get there in, in there and tinker with it and really make it your own. You certainly don't have to do that. That's the job of auto setup. Auto setup will make sure that it's balanced for you. But if you're the kind that likes to get in there and play with it, you can press both 
at the same time. Now, there's only one thing left that I feel is really important to talk about on this instrument, and that is the songs button. If you don't know what that does, it has all ten of the songs from your conductor magic book inside of it. Starting with Ode to Joy and going all the way through Bye Bye Love. And I can pull open my conductor magic book to any song I want. Here's when the saints go marching in. And by using the volume for the orchestral over here, I can scroll until I find the name of the song I want to listen to. Now, I said the start-stop button, only a stop button. Here is the one instance where this is a start button. Press start to start your automatic song. And I can follow along in the music, make sure that it sounds the way it's supposed to and that I understand how it's supposed to go. And I can even change the tempo if I need to hear this slower. And that's a really great helper feature for someone who's just starting out to be able to follow along in the music. So. Um, uh, I'm going to now move over to the dis uh, from the discovery to the freedom. Uh, if anyone has any questions, this would be a great time to ask them while I scoot my uh, my camera over a few feet. Yeah, any questions? Anything he's talked about so far, <clears throat> or anything he hasn't talked about so far? What's the meaning of life? Any questions like that? Anything? Nothing? Okay. I'm sure he'll get to that anyway. All right. So here we are now looking at the Freedom 3 by SD. I've still got the bubble wrap on the rack. It's brand new. Now, when you look at this, you might see a couple of differences from the Discovery. It's a little bit larger, not a whole lot. It has more buttons, uh, several more, in fact. Um, and it's got two keyboards. Something really important to know, anytime you're moving within a series from the Discovery to the Freedom, or from an easy two to an easy four, really from any instrument to any instrument, you're never losing anything. You're only gaining new things. The things that you already learned how to use will still be there in the same place, doing the same thing, working the same way, but there will be some new features on top of that that you'll be able to learn. And as instruments get larger, uh, this seems counterintuitive. Not everyone knows this, but as instruments get larger, they actually get easier to play not harder, because they have more helper features that do more of the work for you or make it easier for you to do the things that you want to do. So uh, a great example of that is the two keyboards. Now, why in the world would you want to have two keyboards? The number one reason is to get your posture in line. Imagine you're playing at a, a Discovery or any single keyboard instrument. You've got your music up here. Your right hand is over here, you got your left hand over here, and you're looking at your music, and you're looking at your right hand, am I still in the right place? And you're looking at your left hand, am I in the right place? And then you're looking up at your music and saying, oh my goodness, where was I? And then you get lost in what we call the Bermuda Triangle of keyboard playing. Now compare that to this two keyboard instrument. If, imagine that this piece of promotional material was in fact my song. Here's my music. Here's my right hand. Here's my left hand. Everything is right in a line. I don't have to move my head left to right at all. I can just roll my eyeballs up and down. It makes it infinitely easier to keep track of where all these moving parts are. Now. Over here in the styles, uh, I'm going to start there because all the different things that come out in a new instrument, it's always new styles that make people the most excited. So compared to the eight on the Discovery, over here you'll see nine style buttons. 
However, when I press one of them, for example, standards, up comes in my screen two names. The first one is swing time. That's the one that we were playing on the discovery. But below it, it says gypsy jazz. I have a new button to my right here called scroll. I can scroll up or down. And if I scroll, my cursor moves from swing time to gypsy jazz. And this that becomes this. And it's an entirely different style. We've moved from a, uh, uh, a swing ensemble, the type that you would hear in maybe the 40s, to the gypsy jazz style of Django Reinhardt and Stefan Grappelli. It's totally different. And the same for all of them. Country. I have Roadhouse on top. The top option is always going to be the one that was on the Discovery. And then below that, I have one called Acoustic Guitar. So very different, right? You'd use it for an entirely different kind of song. But wait, there's more. Going back to standards again, swing time and gypsy jazz, I have a new black button over here called Styles 2 that when I press it, it swaps out swing time and gypsy jazz for big band and boogie woogie. Here's big band. <laughs> So there's my full big band, a more modern sound than swing time, definitely. And then lastly, Boogie Woogie. Fun, right? So that's four inside each of my nine buttons. That's going to give me a total of 36. I had to take off my, uh, my shoes because that's more than 10. But that's 36 different styles here inside the Freedom 3. Uh, and, and there's a really, really wide variety. I wish I had the time to sit here and demonstrate them for you. There's so many really fantastic ones. Uh, maybe I can just show off a couple of my favorites. Um, inside Ballad, the Discovery has 50s love songs. But inside my new styles, I have one called Rising Sun. Uh, as another example, one more, uh, Latin. Starts off with the regular Latin sort of bossa nova rumba and that's on the discovery. Here it is. It's a very mild bossa. Mm -hmm. But if I scroll down to Los Trios, I get a really, really pretty Latin guitar sound. nice so that's uh that's 36 different styles here four per button um moving on in my sounds they've also added a ton new sounds i definitely don't have time to demonstrate all of those unfortunately but in my eight categories it's no longer individual ones instead of piano electric piano jazz guitar electric guitar i now have pianos 
guitars, mallets, strings, brass, woodwinds, vocals, and more. And inside each of those, I can scroll through different options. All of them except for more have two different options that you can scroll between the grand piano and the electric guitar, the jazz guitar and the electric guitar, vibes or bells, and so on. More has 18 different options inside of it. So that's a total of 32 right-hand melody sounds that you can choose from. In fact, you can even now scroll through these lower left sounds, the ones that come on with the easy button. You have multiple options now that you can scroll between. Um, over inside songs, and I'm skipping ahead a little bit because, as you can see here, they've got um, uh, everything else is more or less the same. It's in the same place. You've still got drum volume. Here's tempo. Easy button, stop button, intro ending, and fill. The biggest difference that you're going to see visually over in this section is that it looks like there's more over here, but all that is is the old accomp button broken down into its three components so that you don't have to press two buttons at once. It just makes it a little easier, a little more accessible. Inside the automatic songs, there's more of them. This one has... 30 different automatic songs that it will play. Uh, here, let's listen to just a little bit of Blueberry Hill because here's what's great about this. On the Freedom, the songs has a button called Melody Off right next to the songs. And what that does, and I'll show you this, is as the automatic song is playing, if you turn on the Melody Off button, the melody, the top keyboard, will stop playing and you will have to play the melody. The bottom keyboard, the chords, will continue being played automatically. So it's a great way to practice your right hand timing for songs. for me right now. I'm going to press the melody off button and the melody will go away. Now I have to do it. If I turn that button back off again, the automatic player comes back. I can hear, was I in the right place? Does it sound right? What a fantastic learning tool that is. That is a take-home teacher right there. 30 songs that you can play along with, turn the melody on and back off again. Um, now, from where you are, you can't see my feet. But another new feature on this instrument, it has a pedal, an expression pedal that my right foot goes into. If you've been in one of our physical stores, you've seen these in the different instruments. Now, what that allows me to do is to control the volume without having to reach up and press it myself. I have here the master volume which we talked about, that's the volume for everything in the instrument, right hand, left hand. Well, my foot does that too, but it's called an expression pedal for a reason. If you've ever been to see a band play live, any kind of band or a big band or a symphony or any, anyone, they're never the exact same volume flat all the way through a song or a performance. No, it gets, it gets louder sometimes when it gets exciting, and then it gets quieter sometimes, and that's part of what makes a song great. Now, it's a, it's a pain in the butt to do reaching up constantly to try to press it, but you can use the expression pedal to express yourself with your foot and really inject some life into your songs. Now, it's not just one pedal. I have inside this expression pedal two kick switches, one to my left, and one to my right, that if I move my foot left or right, it will do something for me. Number one. If I move my foot right, do you hear the fill?
it does my fill so that I don't have to lose my place lifting my hand up here, pressing the button, bringing it back. I can keep my hand in the same place. I can still play. I can still change chords. Here's with standards. And then off. Now, to the left, I have a different kick switch that allows me to do something called glide. It allows me to bend a note. I'm moving my foot to the left to accomplish that. That allows me to get the realistic sound of a trombone, for example. The real twang of the country guitar. Or it allows me to do my Hawaiian guitar. And, and so forth. And that's by kicking my switch to the left. So that's a really cool feature that gives me a lot more uh, room to sound authentic. Um, we've also got on here brand new a feature button. Inside the feature button, think of it like a... Um, like an options menu, it opens up several different things that you can do. And to be honest, a lot of them are things that are more technical that our students wouldn't find a whole lot of use in. But there are some pretty cool things even inside the Freedom in the features menu that you can use, number one of which being transpose. For those of you who don't know what transpose is, it takes your sound and whatever you're playing and it makes it sound higher or lower than what you're actually playing. For example, here is a C note. If I transpose up one, it sounds higher, but I'm still playing C. Go up one more. It makes, and it affects every single thing in the instrument. It changes whatever you're doing from the key of probably C. We usually play in C or F or G here. And it changes it into C sharp or D sharp or whatever. It changes it higher or lower if you want. Now, why would you use transpose? Uh, there are many reasons. One reason would be uh, if you are a singer or if somebody comes to your house while you're playing and would like to sing along, uh, it's good to transpose to accommodate their voice. It's very difficult for us to play in a different key, but we can transpose very easily. And, uh, you know, think about maybe you're playing happy birthday uh the key of c is a very bad key for men to sing happy birthday and happy birth <laughs> you don't want that happening in your house so transpose down a bunch of times now when i use transpose i'm no singer uh, i usually use it to inject a little bit of excitement into a song that's been already going on for a while. If I've been playing the same song for a while, you've already heard the different parts of it before, and hopefully it's not getting too old, but if I transpose up a little bit, you know, more than halfway through, it'll inject a little bit of life into the rest of my song. Let me see if I can give you an example here. This is a background called Showtime. It is the Broadway style inside the Freedom, and it's inside traditional, under styles too. And I'm going to play Do, Re, Mi. And what you will hear is that uh, when I transpose up after going through it once, it, it spruces it up just a little bit. Here.
Hopefully you heard that. That's what I like to use transpose for, and just up one does the trick. Um, new, another new feature on the Freedom. Over here on the far right, I have two buttons in a section called Harmony. Harmony is fantastic. I really like that. What that lets you do, you've probably seen someone who is an advanced player playing with more than one finger at a time with their right hand. They are adding their own harmony. The harmony button does that for you. It's very smart. It knows exactly what other notes to put in to sound good with the note that you played. I have two types. I have a duet and a trio harmony. And they are, they're more or less self-explanatory. Duet is two-part harmony. I play a note. I get one more bonus note for free. Trio is three-part harmony. I play one note. I get two more bonus notes for free. Now, all of my bonus notes that come from harmony are to the left of the note that I'm playing. If I play a C note, I'm going to get notes like this one and this one to go along with it. Here you can hear. If you ever use harmony and your sound starts to sound muddy, that's because the notes are coming to the left of the note that you're playing. If I use this C down here, this sounds fine. But if I start adding in lower notes, I'm starting to get a really low, muddy sound. In fact, it's adding in notes that I don't even have access to. They're lower than my keyboard goes. So when it sounds muddy, when you put on harmony, what do you do? I don't know if you guys could hear Eric over there, but he's got it. You move your hand to the right. If it sounds muddy, go up an octave. If it still sounds muddy, go up another octave. Here's an example of that using the same song. I don't know about you, but that sounds muddy to me. And that fixed it. So that, that's my advice using harmony. If it ever sounds muddy, go up the octave. All right. There is one more feature on this instrument, and I think I have just enough time to talk about it. I saved the best to last. This is my favorite feature on these instruments. It's called song setup. I just spent the better part of an hour talking about all the buttons on the discovery and on the freedom here, and there's a ton of them, and how you can use them to set up your songs but you can forget everything I just said if you have this button called Song Setup. Inside this button, I can scroll through a list of 100 alphabetically arranged songs that were requested by our students, like Octu Libre Augustine, Achy Breaky Heart, all the things you are, Alley Cat Song, uh, skipping through because there's so many of them, Aloha, Amazing Grace, Anytime, Beautiful Brown Eyes, Besame Mucho, Blue Skies, there's so many of them, and they're all fantastic. And what I do when I find the one I want to play is I just press my red select button. And you'll see the lights jump around. It just pressed every button that I could possibly need to play the song. By the way, I selected the song Crazy. And it chose country. And not just any country, it chose the specific one of the four that's going to best fit. It chose a guitar for my sound. It balanced the volumes for me so I don't have to. It even turned on the introduction for me because that's appropriate to this song. If you choose a song without an introduction, like Cherry Pink and Apple Blossom White, you won't get an introduction. It's very smart. All I have to do is just play the song. I don't have to press a single button.
I'll choose a different one. Song setup. Scroll a little ways. Find something. The girl from Ipanema. I'm going to press select. It did everything for me. So that, that's the culmination of that idea of push and play right there is the song set up. Choose the song you want to play and then play the song. No more buttons getting in the way. No more lack of knowledge. That's my favorite feature personally is the song set up. And uh, that's, uh, that's our time. We've got three minutes until two. Um, Sean, uh, please open it up for questions. If anyone would like to know anything or if there's anything I need to touch back on. Yeah, before Andrew does a quick uh, finale at the end, he's going to play a song for you on our way out. But if you got any questions, let us know now. Um, and I see one. I think we got one. Lee Clark, go ahead. Let me press unmute there and should be able to go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> in the book, in the, uh, the Freedom 3 book, they mentioned about using a... Uh, um, what am I trying to say? Scroll button. Does that mean you could use any one of the scroll buttons to achieve the, the same thing, or do you have to use the scroll button over on the select keyboard? Uh, on the Freedom 3, the, uh, the scroll buttons are, are to the right of the screen next to that red select button, and there's an up and a down arrow and they, they both do the same thing they just go in different directions so if you were to for example put on song setup and scroll up you're going forward alphabetically if you instead scroll down you're going backwards alphabetically okay but you have to use that scroll button um, there is no other scroll on on the freedom okay the rest are volume buttons okay right, right. Yeah, yeah, and those each of those volumes controls a different part of the volume. So just looking at it here, left to right, in the volume section, master, that's up and down for the entire instrument. Bass, up and down, is for just the bass player. Not, not the bass frequencies, it doesn't make it more trebly, it just removes your bass player. Um, lower is the sound of just the easy button. The style is all your extra guys besides the bass player and the drummer. Thank you. All right, oh, you're great. very welcome. So b before you play a finale song, you can get ready for that. He's got a good song coming up. I'm just going to give you a couple important announcements uh, to end our class today. First of which is uh, we have a concert on Friday. We've been having these uh, weekly pretty much. And guess who our special concert artist is this week? It's Andrew. So you got to see him today. And he's going to perform a full concert on Friday at 2 p.m. in Florida, 11 a.m. in Arizona. Uh, your classes this week are weekly uh, classes we've been doing Wednesday or Thursday, depending on when you attend. Those are gonna be taught by a fella named Carrie Price, who you may have seen on last Friday's concert. So don't miss that, he's a great, great teacher as well. Uh, so you wanna see him, he's a lot of fun. Uh, I just have those two things and uh, other than that, Keep in mind, we actually are going to be having a couple extra special exclusive events uh, this week just for you guys. Uh, if you have an SD or EZ series, uh, watch out for your emails here. You might get a special invitation for something, and if you do, don't miss it. Uh, we like to do that, make some things special throughout the month too, just for you guys or just for you know the big instruments or whatever. So uh, if you get anything like that, see if you can make it, okay? But uh, that's all I've got. Otherwise, I'm going to send it back to Andrew here, and he's going to do a great song for you on our way out. Thanks again. 
All right. Thank you, Sean. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to playing this concert on Friday. Uh, the song I'm about to play for you now may or may not show up, uh, but I'm going to go back to the Trios Romanticos background. It's one of my absolute favorites, and uh, you've probably heard us use it for Besame Mucho more than once before, uh, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to use its lesser heard major introduction, and I'm going to play a, uh, a song called Frenesi. Thank you very much, everybody. I hope to see you guys on Friday. Very good. Loved it. Great. Thank and we're going to take off. Bye-bye. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Great job, Andrew.